Hi, I'm Grace Yang, Data Associate at the States Project. Tonight I'm joined by Lauren Popper Ellis, our Chief Strategy Officer and Counsel, and also the first ever team member at the States Project. Welcome, Lauren. Thanks, Grace. Lauren, I imagine there are many things you might want to go back and tell yourself on day one about the work you've been able to lead at the States Project. But tonight we're digging into how the stakes in state legislatures have changed since our founding in 2017. Over the last five short years, what has jumped out to you as you focus on state houses every day? It's such a great question, Grace. It's something I've been thinking about more and more, especially this year. In 2017, we knew state legislatures were critical, but Grace, today the stakes have risen beyond belief. This year, when the Supreme Court ended a federally protected right they were loud and clear. The Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey are overruled, and the authority to regulate abortion is returned to the people and their elected representatives. Know who those elected representatives are? State lawmakers. This decision ended the protected right to bodily autonomy and privacy between a pregnant person and their doctor, instead making it a state-by-state -state political decision. Since then, right-wing majorities passed extremist ban after extremist ban to limit how and when and why a pregnancy could be ended. The resulting chaos has made it difficult for doctors to provide the best possible care to their patients. That is truly scary. And it doesn't stop there. On the Supreme Court's docket this cycle is Moore v. Harper, which could give a free pass to state lawmakers and state lawmakers only to step in and appoint electors to the Electoral College, regardless of what their voters decide. If that happens, the only thing that will matter is whether a majority of pro-democracy lawmakers in any state legislature is willing to protect the voices of voters in our democracy. When you look at it that way, our work with state legislature puts us on the front lines of critical issues facing our country. And the thing is, most people aren't even aware of how state legislatures affect their lives or vote down ballot in state legislative races. There's clear data showing that the overwhelming majority of Americans don't know who represents them in their state legislatures. How does that impact the policies we see coming out of state chambers? Yes, such a great point. What we're seeing from right-wing controlled legislatures is extreme and overwhelmingly unpopular. But when voters don't know who represents them in their state capitals, harmful policies can fly under the radar. And worse yet, it can allow the shadows that make very extreme bills easy to enact into harmful laws because people aren't looking. That's why what we're doing at the States Project has become that much more critical. We're helping people connect that, hey, the reason one in three classrooms in Arizona don't have a full-time teacher? That's their right-wing state legislature not prioritizing students' ability to learn. Or hey, that water that's unsafe to drink but pumping through taps in a preschool classroom in Michigan? That's their right-wing state legislature not prioritizing clean water. And as so many folks who are joining us tonight know, once you see the power and importance of state legislatures, you can't unsee it. I know. I can honestly say that before working here, I probably never thought about state legislatures as the problem. And now I want everyone to know that state legislatures truly do govern our day-to-day -day lives. Lauren, what can regular people do to prevent extremism in their states? Working to end unchecked right-wing control in the states is how you can stop extremism in its tracks. That could look like volunteering for campaigns, donating, telling your friends and family about the importance of state legislatures, or doing all of these things where it matters most with the States Project. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Grace. <laughs>